Hey everyone, this is Coloring Chemist. My name is Connie and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So some things happened. I know, I know. You can berate me. I'll berate myself. It's, yeah. I was good for March and then I needed to order some replacements for some pens in April and it all went sideways from there. But you know what? Let's, we'll just enjoy the lovely supplies and the lovely books and with the knowledge that I will, I will definitely, definitely enjoy them and, and they make me happy. So let's take a look at what I purchased in April. I will do supplies first and then books and then a big something at the end. Um, so a lot of this is open stock. So let me, let me kind of get some of this out of the way here. I don't have any floor avalanches. All of this is from, well, okay, not that. Like the Boston pizza container I was using to hold things. <laughs> All of this is from uh, Dick Blick. And I, it started <laughs> as I needed um, a refill for the Spectrum Noir alcohol inks. And this is CR5, so I got a, a refill. Um, I, you know, I'm still not entirely sure what's going on with them. I know some of you have reached out to them and they said, yes, they're still offering the refills for their alcohol markers. Uh, they're just rebranding. But then I think others have reached out and discovered that, you know, they're discontinuing the, the refills. I don't know. Dick Blick still has some and particularly their, their CR, their coral series, um, it's got some colors in there that I, that I are kind of unique and I really like. So this is CR5. This is how they come, which is kind of different than a lot of refills, just in case anyone is, is interested. I actually already used this to refill my CR5 marker. They used to come just as a bottle with an integrated stopper in the lid, but they don't anymore. Um, and I think it was because they were having a lot of leakage problems, like around where the, the stopper met the cap. So now it just has a, a regular cap and the stopper is separate. So, but it does make it kind of awkward because, and then it's, they're both sitting in like this little plastic tray, right? And then there's this piece of plastic that goes on the top that sort of holds them, you know, kind of in place like that. But it is kind of an awkward setup. I mean, I get it, you know, cause otherwise the shipping the other ones, it was kind of leaking everywhere, but this is awkward to store because unless you keep it in this box, I don't know how else you would store it because you have all these little separate uh, droppers and you now I can't get it back in the box either because the ink, there we go. Because the ink will stain the dropper, it's not like you can kind of use the same dropper for different inks, right? So each ink needs its own dropper, which is what comes in these boxes. But in terms of storage, yeah, I don't know how else you would store that. So anyway, sorry, that was kind of noisy trying to put this back together. So I got this and then I was looking to get some refills for my Lyra Aqua Brush Duo markers, because I've really been enjoying using those lately. Now, you guys, maybe you've seen this before, you know me. For some reason, my brain says, Connie, if you're going to get refills, you should get a lot of refills. Or not refills, sorry, replacements. Maybe because it's so difficult to get things shipped where I am. Which seems weird. I'm, it's, you know, I'm not, I don't live at the North Pole, but sometimes I feel like I do. <laughs> so, I got duplicates of... I think I got two, two of each of the colors that I was looking to replace. One, I might have even gotten three. These are really great water-based pens. I really like them for coloring. They have some really lovely colors and they have, um, they're very much like a Tombow. They've got a, a brush tip and then kind of a, it's like a bullet, a small bullet tip on the other end. The color numbering line sort of kind of matches up with Faber-Castell's color numbering line. Not completely. And I've done a video on this before and I can try, if I remember, I'll try and link it below. 
Um, but yeah, just sort of getting into using these to do, you know what, flat coloring in coloring books. Not worrying about shading, things like Lulu Mayo, just coloring. And because they're water-based, they don't tend to, to bleed through the paper, right? So I did get some replacements, um, lots of the greens you can see there, some of the pinks. So, oops, sorry. Oops, that was my daughter. I will hang on. Eat the phone. There we go. Um, I also needed some replacements for... I think it's just these two yeah the ivory pit pen I really like using this to blend out colors um, to add into <clears throat> excuse me to add into leaves and petals and it's just a really really pale yellow color it, it's not a, a colorless blender by any means but it, it does work really nicely for for blending out other colors of pit pens so I wanted to get two of those and then, and I suppose, I don't know, I, I, I don't like the term enable. I mean, I, I get it, I get it, but I, feel, I don't want to blame anybody because it's nobody's fault but my own. Um, one of my lovely, lovely viewers had mentioned that pit pens came in a soft brush. And I think I knew that, but I had forgotten. And they come in a range of grays. But I also discovered that they come in this light indigo. Now, there's five of them. They're all the same. I love this color. It's light indigo 220. It doesn't exist in polychromos. It doesn't exist in, in the Albrecht Dürer line. I've actually don't, I don't think I've ever seen it in any of their other lines other than pit pens. But it's a beautiful, beautiful color for skies and water, glass, for shading on snow. I just use it all the time. And so I thought, I'm going to grab a bunch of soft brushes for the, uh, the light indigo. Just, yeah, because I use it for, for shading and for so many things. So, got those. And I also thought I would grab a dark indigo soft brush, just because <laughs> and then I thought you know what other color I use a whole lot of warm gray one I do I use this all the time for oof, a lot of things so I got three of those in the soft brush and cold gray one I also use a ton of so I thought well I will get three of those in the soft brush and then I just got one each of the the other grays that they were offering so I think I've got oh, hang on grab my glasses here um this is warm gray three warm gray four and warm gray five so again soft brush pit pens and the difference between the soft brush pit pen and a regular pit pen is the brush um so this is warm gray three 272 so this is warm gray three 272 but just the brush and you can i don't know if you can see that it's really light writing the bottom there that just says B and this says SB oh, sorry SB uh, the tip here also says SB and the tip here would say B I stuck some numbers on here there you see so you've got brush and soft brush and the soft brush nib is just more flexible so the, the nibs are the same length same size. This one looks a little fatter, I think, it's just because it's kind of frayed because I've been using it. This is my, my regular brush, but um, I got a piece of paper. I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not. So the soft brush, you've just got a fair amount of flex in the brush tip, and the regular brush, you've got some flex, but not as much. I can feel it. I don't know how much you can see it. But that's, I mean, that's that's really the only difference. The color is exactly the same because, of course, Faber-Castell has their lovely color matching system and their artist lines. So, yeah. Um, and then I have cold gray. I think it's cold gray three, cold gray four, and cold gray six. So these were the other grays. 
I think the only one I didn't get, is there a soft brush black? There might have been, but I don't think I got that. So this is all still um, open stock from Dick Blick. And then this was a silly purchase that I should not have made. For some reason, I was thinking this is, they call it this Zig, and I'm going to totally mispronounce that, Fudibiori brush. And it's a water-based dye ink. I was thinking these were different colors than, I don't know why I thought this, but I, I don't know. I wasn't thinking. Uh, different colors than the Zig Art and Graphic twin markers that I already have but they're not. What's different is the brush. Fudibiori brush tips are very hard. They're very stiff. So I actually don't know how useful these are gonna be for coloring because this is 044 deep green. Um, this is 055 deep green. Oh no, this is, never mind. See, 5555. Five, five. These are the same color. <laughs> and these are the Zig Art and Graphic Twin Markers I already had. I have a set of 80. Uh, so let's see. I pulled the colors that are the same. You know what? The one color that's not... Or were there two colors? So there's May Green. There's May Green. Um, there's Gray Brown. There's Gray Brown. Blue Gray. Blue Gray. Olive green, olive green, <laughs> dull blue, dull blue, deep green, deep green, um, and then black, of course, and black. But the one color that I got in the Futibiori that I don't have in the um, Zig Art and Graphic Twin Markers is ochre. So out of me purchasing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these Fudibiori pens, I got one new color. <laughs> so I don't, I mean, you know what? The really hard tip on these, the really stiff nib, it would probably be good for getting into small areas. But I mean, truth be told on the, because I think they're, they're not meant for coloring, right? These are meant for hand lettering. And so for hand lettering, you do need sort of that, you know, variety of, um, nib stiffnesses and so you know these really stiff nibs are going to be great for certain types of hand lettering for coloring probably can't do anything that these couldn't but I guess I have extra pens now um, because with these lovely foam rubber nibs on these Ziggart and Graphic Twin Markers you can get into pretty tiny spaces anyway but I got an ochre <laughs> so yeah the Art and Graphic Twin Markers are not new, so those are not new to me, but those are. So that was what I got open stock from Dick Blick. And like I say, I did need some, some refills for some things, but then I also bought things I did not need refills for, and that seemed to open up some sort of... Oh, I should show you. Um, oh, sorry, not this. So this is the colors of those Fudibiori pens. Um, and then I was comparing with the, the Ziggart and Graphic. And I mean, it's you can see the thicker lines down here, that's the Ziggart and Graphic. And then the thinner line is the Fudibiori. It's the same colors. There's the ochre though, that thinner line. And I was trying to find one that matched and I couldn't. So yeah, I got one color. Yeah. Um, like I say, it kind of opened up some sort of floodgate. <laughs> I have been trying to find a black glitter gel pen that's actually black and not silver because, or even like a black metallic gel pen that's black and not silver because so many of the glitter or metallic gel pens you get um, in black, it's not black, right? It's, it's, and it could be because of the mica that's in there, you know, but it, it, it doesn't look black. And I saw these on Amazon and they were so cheap. So here, we'll do this first. 
it was it was this came like clear tape like packing tape wrapped all together all three of these and I'm pretty sure all three of these were under ten dollars <laughs> to get like all three together I think these are coming from India because it's flare pens India even though everything is is in English on the packaging um so they were third-party seller they were really really cheap but I thought well it's a pack of 10 colors I got three of them and there is a black in there so I thought well for that money you know I'll try it well lo and behold if you can see down at the bottom here there's I'll show you there they're glitter gel pens but that black is black you can see that so it doesn't shine silver it doesn't I mean it's got a, a shine to it there's a silver right above it so these are the 10 colors you get so it's like a yellow orange red pink purple lighter blue darker blue green silver black you know basic 10 colors but the black is actually black and you know what they're pretty shiny considering they're just dirt cheap <laughs> I don't know if they're still for sale I mean I can try and link them below or you can message me in the comments and I can try and find a link for you this is Amazon Canada um I will say so I looked in some of the packages there was one where I was having trouble with the flow with two markers so I just you know went to another package and the, the markers in there flowed fine so I mean you're not getting top quality here um but like I say for that cheap price I was I was pretty impressed and I got technically three of those black pens I was looking for now I also had heard good things about sorry I had to pause there and cough um I'd also heard good things about these link shine pens and again quite cheap although these this package of three was was a better value got more pens same basic colors I think they're virtually almost the same pens to be quite frank um so I, I grabbed a pack of these as well and yeah the black in here is is it's black it's black glitter um but I will say for all of for the flare and these link shine they dry really slowly so if you're coloring you have to be really careful where you're putting your hand <laughs> after you've colored with them because I mean yeah they, they dry quite slowly and so you can easily you know smear them with your hand as you're coloring other parts of the the image so there was those um okay so this was a little peek at the end of my I think it was my March no April no March I can't remember no April <laughs> odds and ends coloring odds and ends video it's a journal and I got it from Amazon and it's it's meant to look all old and you know aged uh, it did come with a, a, a strap to wrap around it and it just is fed through there right and then you could wrap it around and it's like a knotted end so it doesn't pull through but I don't know I, I might put it back on eventually but I was just finding it was more getting in my way than anything and it was also kind of making you can kind of see there like a dent because the paper in here is handmade um it's very well that's what it looks like it's all it's it's supposed to look like that right I don't know if it's been stained it looks like it has it's very soft uh it's got the torn edges it's supposed to look antique right it is stitch bound in there I would like to use this as a journal for keeping track of the pages I've colored because I've never done that and I know I could have just used a simple notebook like a three ring notebook but I don't know I thought this was kind of pretty it's got this really pale or, or olivey green uh leather cover so this is leather I think this was 28 dollars or something Canadian 
on Amazon Canada. Um, I think there's a hundred pages total and I was planning on kind of dividing them up because I don't, I don't write things down and I don't have a, sort of a record of pages that I've colored and I'd like to put one together. So that's why I bought this. To go along with that, and I did not need this at all, but holy cow is it fun. I got this. Now you might be thinking, it's a little pretty little case, Connie. What is it? Maybe some of you might have something similar. It is a printer. And it's, um, I think it's called a Canon Ivy. Yeah. It's a teeny tiny little photo printer. It's wireless. It works off of an app on your, on your phone. And it prints on special, they call it Z ink, or Z ink, zinc <laughs> paper. And you have to buy the paper separately. So it doesn't print on regular paper. It's sticky backed photo paper, but the color, the, the ink is embedded in the paper. It's not in the printer. So this has no ink cartridges to replace or anything else. You just have to always buy this paper. And I tried it out and I will show you. And then this case was actually separate, but I thought, you know what? For something as little as this, I'm going to need a case to keep all this together. And it's, you know, it's a nice protective case. It's meant, I think, to be kind of portable. You know, like people would bring this with them when they're out with their friends doing whatever. And then you can print these little photo stickers, like literally right away from your phone. So it's almost along. I'm a child of the 80s, right? Some of you might be too. And this was even before. Um, I had a Polaroid when I was a kid and it was a splurge for my parents, but the old Polaroids, right? We gave you a picture right away. Kind of the same idea here. Um, so you can print these little pictures. Now you can get these little printers in different sizes. I got the one that prints two by three because on the app, you can then um, put basically two pictures side by side. So each of your pictures ends up being like two by an inch and a half, two inches by an inch and a half. This is what it printed. So it's glossy. And I, I just cut it out and trimmed it. The other picture I took, it was a picture of Mr. Coloring Chemist and I, I just sort of printed it out just to see what would happen. Um, and then I just trimmed off the edges. Now, I don't know if you can see that. That's pretty good detail considering how tiny I printed it because here is the original. You guys might remember this. I colored this back in Christmas time. This is Mel Pamini, um freebie that she put out of Christmas. Now the color is not, you can see this is much darker um, and it's not picking up the subtle color variations, like particularly the red here almost looks brown, but that's okay. You know, I'm not looking for a faithful reproduction of this. I just wanted this to stick in the journal and then I can write down, you know, by this point in time, I'm not going to remember when I finished it because I didn't write down any dates, but I can probably look back and figure out what I used and then it'll just, I'll just have a record of, you know, the, the pages that I colored. So I wanted to do that. Did I need this little printer thing? No, but holy cow, is it fun. <laughs> um, so yeah, so these, these kind of go together. So I'm hopefully going to put together a, a journal. Put these aside. Um, books. Now, if those, for those of you that have already seen the flip that I did of the, the book haul that I did from Aladdin, um, I also include two books that I got from Etsy, but I'll just put them in here quickly as well. So these are the two Korean books that I purchased from Etsy. <coughs> Excuse me, frog in my throat today. Got them from Cool Craft Books. She also included this um, free image to color. It's on pretty nice paper. Now, I don't tend to color this kind of image, so I'll probably tuck this aside for, I'm not sure what, but I, I probably won't color it, but it was lovely of her to tuck it in there. 
This is, I kept saying in my video it was Momo the bear, but it is Momoro the bear. And it's a Japanese book, um, even though this is a Korean edition. And I think it was, was it Be Cozy? She had mentioned in uh, the comments on my, my video that she had gotten a copy of this, I think from Amazon Japan, and it was rectangular. And all of the reference images were in the front, whereas mine, they're, they're side by side, like that. Sorry, just zoom out a bit there. There we go. But this is, I think this is Korean writing. So this is a Korean edition of a Japanese um, coloring book. So B, maybe that's why yours is, is different than mine. But yeah, if you want to see a full flip, you can take a look at that other video of mine. It's a very, very cute, very sweet book. And I also grabbed this one. Did I? Did I get this right? Yeah, I did. Okay. <laughs> This is a uh, watercolor book. Now, I think I said in the other video that this was printed on watercolor paper, but I'm actually not sure of that now. It's definitely printed on thick paper, like card, basically. And it does have some texture to it, but I don't know that it has the texture you would expect of watercolor paper. Like I can see on this image here, which is the reference image, you know, up in the sky, there's definite watercolor paper texture that I can see, but I don't think this is textured, but it's, hmm, I don't know. Unless maybe um, there's a difference between Western and Eastern watercolor paper texture. I, I don't know, but I'm curious. I'm curious to see how different watercolor medium would, would work on this book. But um, it's sort of a, a seasons kind of book, but it's got some really fantastic, like, urban um, images with, you know, telephone wires and that sort of thing. So I just thought it was a really interesting, really beautiful, unique book. So those two came from Cool Craft Books on Etsy. And then... I did the Aladdin um, book order. Now, if anyone, if anyone is struggling with how to order from Aladdin, because it can be tricky, definitely check out Shell's Coloring Journey. And, <clears throat> excuse me, in my Aladdin haul, I had linked her videos there, but I will try and remember to link her tutorial video down here as well, b below this video. Um, because she does an excellent tutorial video on how to go about ordering from Aladdin because their website is a little bit tricky and I know it can be scary you know you're you, you're looking and it's in Korean and then Google Translate will will translate it but mine ended up staying in won I think it only changed to Canadian dollars when I actually went to pay through PayPal so you know with all the the we hear in the news about online fraud and I, I understand it can be scary but as far as I can tell, it's all fine. And I was able to get these five books for about a hundred dollars Canadian with shipping. And it came lightning fast. <laughs> so yeah, if, if now, if you're really nervous, I don't want to push anybody, you know, but I think it's certainly worth, worth a try and definitely take a look at Shell's tutorial video. Cause it will, it will walk you through how to do it. So I got April's Coloring Book of the Four Seasons, or the new one. This is a second copy of Nostalgia. I have this, a hardbound copy of, of this book, but I wanted to get the, the soft cover version just to see if the paper was different, and I think it is. And also, these books are so beautiful. I love this illustrator so much. Green Ivy, I think, is the illustrator. Uh, maybe if I have two copies, I'll be more likely to color in one of them. <laughs> because I just am so terrified of messing things up. But, oh my gosh, so beautiful. And then uh, these three books. So this is a series by, oh my goodness. I'll, I'll try and link it down below. Um, sorry, it's a glare there too. It's the same illustrator and there was a, a autumn picnic, cat's autumn picnic, I think it was. And then there was a, a spring sunshine book 
I think it's called. And then there's also a winter. I think this is winter sunshine too, or something about winter and sun. But just the most adorable images. And you have the reference on the left-hand side, so you can copy or not. But yeah, so I've got full flips of, of all of those books on a previous video that I did. Ooh, almost threw them on the floor. And then I got some books from Amazon. Um, <laughs> I know you guys are laughing at me because I previously said, I don't know if I like Lulu Mayo books and I bought, you know, those other four and I wasn't coloring in them and I regretted buying them and now I've bought this one. But you know what? Since I'm approaching them differently and I think I talked about this maybe in my March completed pages, I'm just going to approach these as like flat coloring color a whole page with glitter gel pens if that's what I feel like um, I think I, I like that approach to them for me rather than sort of approaching them as each one has to be you know a really carefully considered and planned um, page to just let go just if I want to just flat color just do it so, and there were so many cute pages in here that I'd seen people do. And it's spring and the baby animals. And so, yeah, I grabbed that from Amazon. I saw this one on, was it Doodle Robot? I think it might have been Doodle. She loves trees. And you know what, Doodle? So do I. I love trees. Love them. And so this is Color Yourself to Tranquility. Um, Melissa Lone, not sure if that's how you say that or not. My apologies if I'm not saying it right. I can give you the ISBN for this in case anyone's not seen it. Oh, sorry. The, I think this is a series. It's the color yourself two kind of thing. And there's other ones, but this is the only one I got. Look at the cover on this. It's like, like you could build a house out of that, the chipboard there. <laughs> That's incredibly thick. And then it's stitch bound. It lies beautifully flat, but it's got all of these images of trees and some of them are kind of zen doodly and some of them are not, but I really, really love trees. So thank you, Doodle. I'm pretty sure it was Doodle Robot. Um, I'm sure others have shown this as well, but I think that's where I saw it first. So yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm really gonna enjoy that one. Um, I also, and this I think was Maya. Was it Maya? Maya, I think it was you. I think that's where I saw this one. Might have also been Doodle too. <laughs> uh, the Woodland Kingdom coloring book. And this is Japanese. Uh, Toshiyuki Fukuda. Hopefully I said that right. I can give you guys the ISBN for that one. This is a very thick book, a lot of images in here. The, um, the illustration style is, it looks pixelated, but it's pixelated on purpose, if that makes sense. So it almost looks like, can you see the line work? It, like it was sewn with like a, a zigzag stitch. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. But I mean, it's just, it's so neat and, and cool and interesting. And so you can see how the pages are set up. They're, they're kind of all set up as, um, and it is nice paper. It's, it's not, you know, Amazon print or anything like that. They're set up as double page spreads, even though not all of them are. But so you'll get, you know, images like this and then two blank pages and then two images. So this isn't necessarily a double page spread, but they're images that are facing each other and then two blanks. So you could use alcohol marker on these images because you're never going to be having to worry about covering an image on the other side. But this book just looks so cool. And I really like different, unique, interesting books. So it's Woodland Kingdom coloring book, uh, Toshiyuki Fukuda. Also grabbed two 
Creative Haven books. I really love Angela Porter. Um, I like her really intricate style. I like having all these tiny little elements to color. So yeah, this, this was her newest one, I think. So this is Daydreams. They're all single-sided. Some of them are just very doodly. <laughs> I really like using the Stabilo pens in this in these kinds of books. Uh, the fine liners and then their so those are the point eighty eight and then also the point sixty eight, which is kind of like their felt tips. You could use Crayola super tips in here. It's the newer. Um, let me find a date here. It's the newer Creative Haven paper, so it's it's not as good i don't think yeah it's 2024. um it's not as smooth and nice as the older ones were but they're just a fun book to play with so this is daydreams by angela porter sorry about the glare there guys this is an older one by jessica mazurkowitz and it's scandinavian folk art and half of my heritage is scandinavian so I just really I like the look of this. I liked, again, just the, the folk art nature of it. Um, this says 2015 and then 2023. So this actually feels like the newer Not Great paper. I was kind of hoping because it was an older Creative Haven book, I would get an older copy from 2015, but I don't think I did. Oh, well. Actually, the, the glue binding on this isn't great either. Um, I don't know. I, I could always scan these images and color them on different paper, but yeah, it was just, I like the Scandinavian uh, folk art kind of, and I do love Scandinavian folk art, just the, the art itself. I got this one and this, is, sorry, I'm not even fitting the whole thing on here. Can I zoom out anymore? I can go. Does it fit? This is Layla Dooley's Walk in the Woods. Um, do I have another Layla Dooley book? I think I have Flower Year, but I've not colored in it. But I love trees. I love woodlands. And I, who did I see coloring in this? I think it was Lucy. Lucy just adds color. Love Lucy. And she was flipping through, she was coloring in it, and I just thought, this is just such a, I just love trees. I love the woodlands. You guys have seen out my window. Uh, I live on a quarter section of land, so 160 acres, and I've got trails that I keep maintained all through it. And I just love being out there. There's something about trees and being in the woods and I just love it. So yeah, I got this. And this is a beautiful, beautiful book. If anyone would like a full flip of this, I can certainly do that. Um, I love this color. Oh, hedgehog. The fact that it's intricate does not put me off at all. Um, I think this paper, it feels like it would work really nicely with pit pens. I haven't tried it. Uh, it's very smooth, but yeah, it was just such a beautiful book. So Layla Do Dooley's Walk in the Woods. She's got like a index at the back here, so it tells you what the species are. Whether it be plant or animal, I think that's lovely. It's just a, a lovely, lovely book. So Layla Dooley's Walk in the Woods. Oh, a few supplies that I forgot to add. I know. I we I really went off the rails this month. Gonna have to rein that back in. Um, these are some replacement Stettler brush pens, the pigment ones, and I got these from Cult Pens, which is the only place that I've ever found online where you can buy them open stock. Um, you can buy. Well, maybe you can at Blick. I don't think so though. You can buy sets through Amazon and Blick and different places, but you can actually buy them open stock through Cult Pens. So that works really well for me because, of course, I don't use all the colors equally. And so buying a whole set every time I need, you know, new colors 
doesn't make sense but the fact that you can get them open stock at cult pens is great so yeah got some some replacement colors for those and while i was doing that because of course i can't ever just order what i need um i actually picked up some stabilo pen 68 brush pens now these are water-based markers Stabilo, of course, makes fine liners, and I really like their fine liners. I, I think I actually like them better than Stellar. I think I've mentioned that before. So I have a full set of the Stabilo fine liners. Um, I don't think I have a full set of their Pen 68, which are these ones, right? They've got a, like, just a, like a bigger bullet tip, but I have some of them, and I did grab this one too, because I think it's one that I didn't have. I think this is... They don't have color names on them, but they do have color numbers. This is 38. I honestly can't remember what the color name is, but um, but they also have these Pen 68 brush, and I think I had one or two of them, but I thought I'd grab a few more, particularly the greens, just because when you're coloring with these water-based markers, if you've got a larger area, a brush does sort of a, just a less kind of streaky job sometimes. So this is color 43, and they're, they're brush ones look like that so it's a small brush it's not a large brush but yeah I just thought I'd grab a few of those from cult pens as well so I got a couple greens here there's a kind of a lighter a medium and then a, a really dark and then a couple browns and then that one um, pen 68 but not a brush and again can't just get what I need I also grabbed these these are Faber-Castell black edition felt tip pens with a soft brush nib. As far as I can tell, why don't we open them together here? So this is a pack of six. This is a pastel pack. They just come in a cardboard box. I don't think, oh, they're just kind of on a piece of card there. I don't think there are um, names or numbers on these. Like I can't, there's an L3 that's kind of inscribed down there, but that seems to be in the bottom of all of them. So that, no, that says M3, but that says L3, L3. Yeah, so that must not mean anything. And I can't see anything on the caps. That's what the, the brush looks like. Um, I don't see any color names or numbers on the packaging. Just a soft pastel colors and soft brush nib for variable line widths, washes out of most fabrics, color the ink based on food dyes, disposal of used packaging, see QR code. Um, yeah, it's just a, just a cardboard box. So, there's some paper. So this is just straight up copier paper. I think in the UK you guys call it cartridge paper. Is that right? But let's see what some of these colors look like. See what the brush feels like. Yeah. It's a stiffer brush, but then mind you, they are brand new. So there's a yellow, pastel yellow. There's a pastel orange. Pink. I don't even know if you guys can see that. Here, we can try zooming in a bit. There we go. Looks like a pastel purple. Oh, that's blue. Uh, sort of a blue-violet pastel. And then like a pastel green. I just thought they were fun. Just wanted to grab them, see what they were like. I do like Fab Faber Castell products. Um, so I also have um, just to compare. I have the full set of these, which are the Faber Castell Gold Faber Aqua dual markers, and they have a brush nib on one end and like a. It's like a fine liner, but a big fine liner on the other end. So how do these brushes... I 
these brushes feel stiffer. So the the Faber the it says super soft brush these these black edition, but that actually feels stiffer than this. What do they look like? I guess yellow was a bad color, wasn't it? Yeah, they look a little bit different. The gold Faber nibs are kind of fatter and rounder, whereas the the black edition nibs are uh, a little bit slimmer. But yeah, they're they're. I mean, they weren't very expensive. In fact, I think when I grabbed them, maybe they were on sale. I can't quite remember. Um, but yeah, sorry, my zoom is being all weird today. There we go. So. Just a pack of six. I don't think I'll get any more. I don't know how many colors they come in, but I just thought, I don't know, it's kind of a fun spring spring pack of colors there. So we have that. Oh, and I did order a pack of these from Amazon. They took forever in arriving, <laughs> but I don't know that that's Amazon's fault. Um, these are the Thule Art replacement nibs. So I got a pack of 30 of the extra fine, like the plastic replacement nibs. So just to, cause sometimes they get, I'm bad. I'm bad for leaving them. I don't wash them right away. So then sometimes the acrylic paint gets really gummed up in there. You just, I've tried soaking them in boiling water and sometimes you just can't get it out. So it's nice to have, and they, they do come with some extra nibs, but I just thought I would, yeah, just order a little pack of the the extra fine. And I think I mentioned earlier in the video, um, I, I did a thing. I mean, I, I bought, you know, I had the Aladdin order. I don't, I keep blaming stress, but I obviously am stressed all the time or I just uh, buy too much stuff. But I, I, yeah, so I did a big thing and you guys are gonna laugh because it is a big thing that I previously said. In fact, I even remember saying to myself on a video at some point, Connie, you don't need these. You don't need these. You don't need these. Can you, oh, sorry, glare. Can you see what that is? And then this and this. So all together, 180 colors of the Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens. I know, I know. Oh, so let's see if I can get some packaging off here. Sorry, that's kind of a terrible sound, isn't it? Got these from Amazon US, actually. Um, it was kind of the best price. So this 120 set is before 2023, I think, or 2022. There was a 90 set. Sorry, there's glare there. Let's get rid of some of that. There was a one, no, there was a 90 set. And then in 2022, they came out with a 30 set that was set A. And it was smoky colors. And then I think in 2023, I, you know what? I might have the dates wrong, but in some time in, in the last number of years, they had a 30 color set A, set B, and set C. So 30, 30, 30, that would be 90 plus the original 90, so it's 180 colors. But they now have this 120 set. And so if you get the 120 set and the 30B set, which is this set of, it's like a lot of blues and greens. And then the 30C set, which is kind of really bright, warm, kind of almost jewel tones. This gives you the full 180. So, I, I did this. Did I need them? No, I did not. But they're so pretty. 
they are so pretty. For those of you that, that have never seen these before, um, they are, they're basically liquid watercolor in a pen that has an actual brush tip that's got bristles and they it's water-based dye ink i don't think they are refillable i don't think they are but you can get them open stock and i really really like getting things and i know things that are available open stock are often more pricey um they tend to be the the bigger companies the older companies you know higher end uh, but I really do like things that I can get open stock because I don't tend to use all the colors equally. And so I can just then go and purchase, um, you know, colors that I run out of without having to buy a, a whole set. So there are a few things that I will buy refills or, or backup sets if, if there's a, a supply that uh, doesn't come open stock. But I, I tend to, to really just, I really like things that, that yeah, are available open stock. And these are so pretty. <laughs> um, to hold them, they come in these boxes, which I know, I think a lot of people maybe keep them in. It's, it's plastic. Um, it's, it's, it's a pretty flexible plastic. I though am going to put them in something else and I may stop this video. It'll just be a second for you. It'll be a little while for me because I bought something else to put them in and yeah so I'm gonna pause this because that way I'll get rid of the, some of the glare too because all this packaging is all plastic so that yeah I will I will pause the video it'll be a second for you be a while for me hang on all right so I'm back just wanted to show you the empty cases here um, just in case you were you know we're looking at these and we're wondering how the, the cases were made. It's a thicker kind of textured plastic. Um, it's, it's not sturdy though, right? It's squishable, but it does have, I don't know if you can see in there, not slots for each pen. Like this is a, a case for 30 pens and there are six slots in there. So five pens per slot. Um, so, I mean, you could store your pens in these cases and the, there would be a little bit of structure inside. Sorry, it's very shiny. Same thing with this. Uh, so this is the B and C set. And then the big set of 120 comes in this. This is like a cardboard sleeve. It's got beautiful artwork on it. And it has the color numbers and names of the pens in box one and box two on the, the cardboard, whereas these didn't. So the, the 30C and the 30B set did not have, there's no information on there. So, I mean, you could keep this or on these boxes uh, themselves, there's a little just piece of paper inside. So this is box one, this is box two. The piece of paper has all the color names and numbers on there as well and these boxes also have got like little tabs that slide underneath to close it same kind of plastic and there's slots in there as well so you can see that so i mean you could keep them in these boxes i chose not to because i purchased this <laughs> this case is giant I don't actually know I don't think I can zoom out anymore I mean you could see the size of my hands compared to um, the, the case I mean it's it's well over a foot tall and I can see this it's like a suitcase right it's huge got it on Amazon and the reason I got this as opposed to one of the smaller kind of pencil cases is because these pens, open up, you can see here, 
when you try and put pens like this into a sort of a regular pencil case, you know, a case that you would, you know, the, the, the pencil cases that have the single slots, they're, they're, they'll fit in the slots, but the cap on them is a little bit wider than the pen, which means that if you try and put them one in each slot, by the time you get to the end of the row, usually the slots are going this way, the pens just don't fit anymore. So then you end up, you know, sometimes there's slots you don't use. This is just a giant case. <laughs> I think it holds, there was two different sizes. There was one that holds, and they're marker cases is what they are. One that had 168 slots, I think, and one with 220. This is the 220 case. It's huge. So I will say the, um, so the elastic on the slots is actually a little bit big for these pens. It's probably more meant for like alcohol marker sized pens. So Ohuhu's, Copics, right? That sort of thing. But it's meant for pens or markers that are not too long because you're, you're meant to put them in, in two rows like that. And this has, so there's, there's one leaf. Sorry, you can't see the whole thing. I just don't think I can zoom out anymore. <laughs> um, there's another leaf. There's another leaf. So this is 180 colors, remember? And of course, it doesn't quite fill the case. So it goes up to right there. The rest of the case I just filled up with markers that I already had. Um, I don't know if you remember in a previous haul, I think it was the January, February one, I'd bought a few open stock Karen Deco brush markers. Didn't really have anywhere to put them, so I thought, well, I'll put them in here. I do have a small set of brush bowls that I bought years ago, so those are Zig as well. Now, they're a little bit tall, so you can see there's, you know, they kind of push up on these ones above. That's okay. You know, you kind of make them go in between the ones about it, it it's fine so there's six brush bowls and a set of ohuhu um dot pens so zig also makes these they're clean colored dot pens and you guys might have seen them they have that kind of a nib on one end and it just makes depending on the pressure you put down um it makes really nice circles and then the other end is just like a, a bullet dip and this Ohuhu set was far cheaper than, you know, the, the Zig brand. Um, and I think it came with sort of a number of colors. And then there's like five metallics, I think, or six metallics, five. I stuck those, oh, sorry, you can't even see. I stuck those Faber-Castell Black Edition markers, that set of six pastels that I just showed earlier in the video. I stuck those in here. And then the, <laughs> the one that I can't pronounce, Futabiori. Uh, I stuck those seven pens in here and then it, it filled it up. So yeah, this case is huge. So I'll turn it this way. I don't know if you can see. So then you've got your, your slots. Um, I mean, it's a good case. It's got, it's nice. It's got padding on the outside. It's just so big, but I think for now I will keep them in here. I'm going to keep the boxes just in case, I don't know, I, I want to transfer them back, but I, I do like having them in here in the individual slots because of course I make swatch cards for basically all my, my media. And so you guys have seen these before. I will make these little individual swatch cards to put, you know, in cases. And the color order here is not a color order I came up with. It's based on a color order that I got from, uh, it was a, so there we go. It was a swatch strip chart that I purchased off of Etsy. And then I just used the, the same color order. It's not, there's definitely some changes I would make, I think, if, if I was doing the color order. 
but I just haven't had a chance to sit down and I haven't worked with the colors long enough to really sort of get to know them to do my own order. And then of course, you know, some of the things over here are the, the other things that I'm storing in here. But you can also get a one page, and I'm gonna move this giant case out of the way. There we go. You can get a one page swatch from the Kiritaki website. And you can either get it printed or you can get it blank. So I just printed off a blank one and I filled it in with the, the pen colors. This doesn't go in rainbow order. It's, it sort of kind of goes this way, sort of, but then sometimes it jumps around oddly. <laughs> um, you know, you've got yellow green, then all of a sudden we've got uh, pale orange and then it goes to pale yellow and then we're back into the greens. And so it's, yeah, not sure why the color order goes this because it doesn't make sense this way either yeah not really sure but at least it gives you a, a sense of of the colors that you get and like I I'm just you know I've said it before and I'll say it again I'm just I feel so blessed and thankful that uh that I can have all these beautiful supplies <laughs> Again, said it before, I'll say it again. I need to use them, don't I? So I'm really hoping to use these real brush pens in, <clears throat> excuse me. This book. And uh, this book because these are the two books that I have where this one actually has 200 GSM watercolor paper and you know it's got the kind of texture you would expect on watercolor paper. I don't know if it's sized, it could be. I don't think it says, but just some beautiful images in here. And then this was the one, this of course I got uh, a little while ago. And this was the one that I showed earlier in the haul. That's the, the Korean book. It says it's watercolor paper, but I, it doesn't seem to have the same texture, but it could be an Eastern versus Western watercolor paper thing. I don't know if any, and if any of you know, um, definitely let me know in the comments below, but yeah, I, I would like to use the pens for the image coloring. And then I think I will use, last year I got some granulating watercolors from Schmincke. I want to try using those for some of the backgrounds in the skies. Just, and and maybe some of the, you know, like the, the foreground kind of stuff and kind of work that in. Those pens are going to be really nice for, you know, tiny details like that. You know, if, if you're coloring, um, but I would probably imitate what's here down here I, I don't think I would feel <laughs> comfortable enough and confident enough to go off on my own and try and do my own thing so you know tiny little details those watercolor pens are going to work beautifully for that but larger areas I think would probably work better with say a bigger watercolor brush and actual watercolor paints so you can get some because you'll this almost looks like they've done like a wet on wet technique down in here where they've got, you know, colors just sort of letting them bleed and go into, you know, where they need to. So, yeah. But, like I say, I am certainly lucky to have such beautiful supplies and I need to use them. April and May are stressful months for me as a teacher. I'm coming up on the my course ends in May, so then you've got final exams, you've got final reports, all those kinds of things. So I've gotten a tiny little bit of coloring done in April. I'm hoping to do a little bit more before the end of the month. May might be a write-off. And I know you guys have asked me for different kinds of videos. I am still going to get a video done with our with our pigment series and take a look at ancient pigments. Um, had some people ask about color alongs, which I feel odd. It sounds silly, but I feel odd about doing them because I, I don't feel like I have anything to teach. I don't know. I'm such a beginner and I'm just kind of floundering and, and learning as I go. So, I mean, I, I certainly can. Um, yeah, I just don't know if I have anything to show you guys, but I guess I can, I can give it a try and we'll see how it goes. 
I think that's it. That's all I bought for it. <laughs> that's all. That's what I bought in April. So if you like this kind of thing, if you like my channel, you know, consider giving my video a like, uh, subscribing to my channel, leaving me a comment, hitting the notification bell, letting your friend know that you found a channel that you like and they might like it too. I hope everyone is safe. I hope everyone is well. And I hope everyone is enjoying their coloring. Until next time, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.